Hey folks, Machinery Pete here. I'm on the road and I'm in Waterloo, Illinois. And a uh, very cool story I wanted to share. Um, I grew up in a dealership family myself and uh, I haven't run across many dealers with a 110 year history. I'm, I'm here with William Noby and Company. And on the left we have Tom Noby and on the right his son Brad. Now Tom, you are the president and CEO. I am, yes. And Brad, you are uh, large egg sales? That's correct, uh, yes. Okay, well, 110 years, 1907. How did uh, William Noby get started? Well, it got started by my grandfather's older brother. His name was William, and uh, he started it, and then my grandpa and another brother actually followed in, in recent years after that. Okay. And um, they had uh, uh, binders and all the horse-drawn equipment and reapers, um, buggies, and it, it evolved into the tractors, and we had Samson, McCormick Deering, J.I. Case. And then um, the cars, the advent of the cars came about to start selling those. And then... The advent of cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then uh, they spun off and got into the car business separately. And then okay. my grandfather took off with the farm equipment business. And it was January 2nd of 1929 when they actually signed the contract with John Deere. Wow. January 1, 229. Yep, yep. Wow. And uh, Tom, what year did you get involved in come back? I, I actually started working, well, I, I worked as a kid uh, right. in the dealership, but I actually got on the payroll in 68. And I actually did go to college, but I went to college uh, the last three semesters at night and then worked full time mm. during the day. Okay. It was in my blood. I really, I just loved being around the Very dealership. Cool. And I was really fortunate to be able to do everything that you could possibly do in a dealership. And I think that's a a big advantage. With Learning from the ground yep. up. No question. Very cool. And Brad, uh, you got involved in the business in the, was it the 90s? Uh, so as a kid in the 90s, yeah, but uh, full time was 2008 and that was actually right whenever uh, Precision Ag started to become a much bigger deal in the, right. in the dealerships. Uh, in fact, we were, I was already kind of working a little bit on that kind of stuff when I was in college, but okay. uh, started with that and uh, did that for five years. and. My dad's cousin Brian was in business with him uh, for all those years. He okay. retired at the end of 2013, and at that time I filled his position as, as the manager of large ag sales. And we have a brother, uh, your brother Jared is in the business too? He is, yeah. So Jared handles the turf and small ag okay. side of the business. We, uh, we're we pretty fortunate. We have a nice diverse uh, customer base, so we got a lot of turf and small mm. ag customers as well as large ag. And uh, we think that's a huge benefit to have specialization in both. Uh, right. It takes a lot of load off of the two of us, and uh, I think it helps support our people better, too. You guys, Waterloo, Illinois, is how far away from St. Louis here, guys? We're about 30 minutes from okay. downtown St. Louis. So as that metro has grown over the years, I, I imagine that must be a very strong uh, lawn and garden, small utility tractors. Uh, how's that market been here the last couple of years? It's been pretty good. It seems like uh, the, turf, the turf business just gets a little bit better every year. Uh, what's a, what's more uh, exciting for us is the small tractor business seems like it's it experiences really good growth uh, year in year out. So okay. that's been uh, it's been exciting for us and significant for a lot of our locations, um, especially the the hay dominant locations. Okay. Well now, uh, Tom, so you got in you kind of got in the business in the late eighties, eighty nine. You said. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's when we bought my uncle and my dad. Oh right, right. Okay. Yep. yep. So you, you've seen some changes here. Oh I mean, my, I have. Speak to that. I mean, you grew up in the business as a kid and, and you see where it's going and what Brad is doing now on the tech side. I mean, what amazing changes. The, the, the equipment itself, the technology that involved in the equipment is just phenomenal. I was really glad, like to Brad's point, him coming on board because he brought a lot to the table with the, with the uh, precision form right. end of the business. But uh, yeah, there's been so many changes. And I think back to my grandpa, if he if he had an opportunity to be back here, he would be amazed. What would he say at the 9620RXs? <laughs> yeah, he he would say, I, I, I think I told you last night, um, he was, um, we had our employee meeting and we had a, the, the RX out there in front of there and then we had we were flying drones out there that we sell and I, I can't even imagine what he would think of that uh, today. Wow. Well, that's uh, pretty exciting to, to live through those changes and help your customers along the way. And and uh, Brad, that's uh, got to be an exciting part of the business, the, the technology side, helping your customers. I mean, that's kind of where it's at today, isn't it? Yeah, and we know, uh, we know there's a lot of room for growth as well. So we know that's just going to continue to get uh, easier to manage that data, and it's going to become more important to manage that data. 
um, and to have smarter machines. Uh, so I had a customer tell me one time, it always kind of resonated with me, he said, you know, my whole life I've seen, uh, I've seen equipment get bigger. And he goes, it just can't hardly get much bigger. He goes, I know what his son, Kevin, he said, I know you and Kevin, what you guys are going to see is you're going to see equipment just get smarter and smarter. Smarter and smarter. I think that's a, that's a very accurate assessment looking forward. That, um, can I quote you on that? Absolutely. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Well, Brad, what, uh, so what was that like coming back into business, you and your brother working with, working with Pop? It's fun, you know. The, the biggest thing is all three of us are really passionate about it. We we this, we love what we do. We we enjoy it. It's kind of to some degree, it's kind of our, our hobby. Sure. Um, so that that makes it exciting because you're working with uh, you're working together every day, and you know that everybody's working toward the same goal. Right. Uh, so that makes it makes it fun, and it's uh, a lot of times there's a good good debate between the three of us. So that's that's always good as well. So you guys have open line of communication. Absolutely, yeah. Very cool. Now let's flip this and dad. You have your two sons in the business. What what is that like? It's uh, it's an awesome experience. There's no doubt about it. It's uh, to be able to work closely with them uh, day in and day out. I mean, that's just really unique. And and to be able to, like he said, get along and respect each other is pretty phenomenal. Um, we you know I, they did spend um, two two different dealerships each uh, summer internships. That's mm. some pretty good dealers, and they had a. Uh, they both, I think, have gained some valuable experience sure. out of that. Hmm. Interesting. That's. Uh, I think that's smart to give the, give the young guys exposure to different organizations. And what what did you bring back from that, Brad? Brad back home. Yeah. So the one the one I spent the, the entire summer in parts, and it was interesting because mm -hmm. the plan was to move me around to the different locations, sure. and uh, I got comfortable in parts, and they uh, I think they were comfortable with what I was right. what I was providing. So. Right. Uh, learned a lot about parts. I probably drove our uh, our corporate parts sure. manager here crazy, just asking him questions about yeah. how we do things and if it's the same. And the second time, I, I uh, worked with a, a guy in Kansas on precision ag, mm. and uh, was very very good. And uh, that made it a whole lot easier for me when I started full time in, in 2008. Uh, spent the summer with him, so I got a feel. Uh, I think that they were probably a little bit further ahead of the curve. Sure. And it was really helpful for me to get a start. Bring that knowledge back home. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Truthfully, we were just really fortunate to be able to offer that opportunity to at those dealers. I right. think that was a really neat thing on their part. Yeah, very cool. And now, okay, we got a 110 year history. We're here with William Noble and Company. So 110 years, but you guys are, are kind of on the cutting edge on a lot of things you've done here. Tom, I'm just interested to learn about them. Some, some on, the, on the service side. Why don't you talk about that, some of the things you've done here over the last yeah, 20, so, 30 years? So probably in the late 80s, we've, we felt a need for more space in the shop mm -hmm. and um, decided to, to try to implement a second ship at Waterloo. And uh, we had an employee meeting, had every employee there. And we really thought we were going to have a lot of opposition to that. But we found that there was employees that really were on board with that, that they formed during the day and that offered them an opportunity to work in the evening. Okay. Uh, and it's worked well ever since and we we don't have quite the space issue because we have uh, additional buildings, but uh, it's it's provided a, a tremendous uh, resource for our customers. Oh, I would imagine. To be able to take care of them uh, for parts and service up to 1130. Brad, what do, they, what do your customers say about that kind of around the clock ability to catch you guys? Yeah, so Obviously, it makes them makes them feel a lot better. Um, and when they have that problem, that, I mean, nobody wants to ever have a breakdown. But if right. you have it at seven or eight o'clock, it's it's a lot more comforting comforting to be able to pick up the phone and and know that you're not bothering somebody in their evening. That you're calling somebody that's that's there to help them. Um, and and uh, the biggest thing I always say is to put a plan in place. You know, a lot of times we can fix it right right that night. But if we can't, right. uh, we're able to kind of put a plan in place for the next day and make sure we got the parts secured and. Uh, and the, the person in line to go get right. that job done. I gotta ask you guys, we were filming this morning for US Farm Report out with one of your customers, a little bit north of here, and it was, what's shown through was the, the high level of trust with the customer, and you guys have always been here. Tom, is that, with 110 year history, has that been a key driver of your business, that, that building that trust with the customer? It, it certainly has, and I, I guess, you know, I would give that credit to my grandpa and my father and my uncle because they, they built that for us. All we had to do was maintain it and, and take care of it going forward. So right. we were really fortunate. And we actually, if I pan around here, folks, I think we have a picture on the wall. Why don't you guys walk over here and, and tell us uh, 
who we're looking at here with uh, the history of Okay, so the picture you're looking at right now, my father Ed is on the left, that's my grandpa in the middle, Henry, and that's my Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob, okay. And very cool picture here. This is this is obvi obviously later on, so that's my son Jared on the left. Okay. That's my cousin and used to be partner Brian, and then his dad Bob, then my dad Ed, myself and then Brad. Well, guys, it's really been a treat uh, hanging out with you. Thank you for your help. Uh, the segment on U.S. Farm Report folks will air, I think, the third weekend in November. So make sure to catch that. Uh, more great info on William Noby and company here. But, guys, I know it's a busy time of year with Harvest, but thank you for taking the time to tell us about your company, and uh, yeah, keep rocking. Thank, thank you. We really appreciate it to you.